All right, hello again, everybody, and my word, have we got a treat for you. This is going to be a tutorial that I wish somebody had given me years ago. There are so many ways that people do hair, but it all boils down to just one of a few things, usually just downloading a particular brush or using a certain filter and then hitting it a hundred times with the uh, smudge tool. But for this, this actually is much more complex, but at the same time, pretty straightforward. It's something that you only have to learn to do once, and then once you have it learned, you just take that one thing that you do and do it hundreds of times. So this tutorial is both going to be really short and really long at the same time. You'll see why. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take my hair from the flats layer, and I'm going to select the color wand, and I'm going to select it with the tolerance at zero, anti-alias, contiguous, and sample all layers unchecked. So I'm going to select it. So now all the hair in the scene that I am going to shade is selected and ready to go. With the flats layer selected, I press Control J, and it creates this new layer here called Layer 1. And this is actually going to be our hair layer. So let's rename that. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to duplicate the layer by holding down Alt and just dragging up. So now I have a duplicate of it. And I'm going to hold down Alt and click in between. So not only is there a duplicate, but the duplicate is also linked to the layer underneath it. So if I were to do anything like paint out here, it won't appear. All that I paint will appear within the hair like this. So that'll just keep things more organized. So the first thing I'm going to do is I need to set the brush for my hair, and I don't use a hairbrush. I use just straight up default hard edge brush that comes with Photoshop. So it doesn't even need to be that size. Let's go with a size 5 brush on this one. The size depends on the actual size that you're working with, but you want the hair to be you know, about that big in comparison to everything else. And the smaller you do it, if you go too small, you'll put in a lot of work for something that nobody's going to notice. And if you go too big, it's all going to overlap and look clunky. So you need to find that right balance between them. So again, as I say before, gut feeling. You just got to practice a fair bit to figure it all out. So let's set our opacity from 35% to 70%. And I'm just going to make a couple of test strokes right here to see how it overlaps. And this is what I want to see, is I want it to appear kind of a uniform brightness between where it overlaps. So when I press it once, twice, and three times, that it all looks discernible. And from this, it looks fairly discernible, but not completely. So what I'm going to do is to ensure I can get the best contrast out of my hair, I'm going to work it a lot darker than I normally would. Now this character here, Black Cat, she has white hair. So why am I starting out with something that is essentially this shade? I mean, white is all the way up here. Why am I going with this color? And the reason why is because my brush mode is set to linear dodge. And when I make several strokes of the hair, as they start overlapping many times, they will become closer and closer to white. And then later on, when I start adding in things like, you know, the specular highlight and then other highlights as well, it will start to appear white in the long run. So we're starting dark and we're going to work to our lights just so that we can get as much detail as we can out of the hair. Because let's say that we're working on it and we're just doing the first pass where we're setting the texture of the hair, you know, just the general flow of it. If it already turns white, that means that we're not going to be able to see any further highlighting that we do on it. So we start dark to give us some more wiggle room to establishing the proper contrast. So 
Here's what I start out with for the hair. Once I have the brush in place set to linear dodge 70% in this particular instance, I'm going to select the pen tool. Now the pen tool has three modes in Photoshop. It has the paths tool and then it has the completely sucks and never use it shape tool. So don't use that. Always have it set to this. Because if you have it set to shapes, it'll just create a whole new layer of a fill based upon the shape that you define with the pen tool. And all that we want to do is we just want to create a path. And a path is just this right here. It's just a parabola. It's a curve in the hair. And I go into this in the actions tutorial. So what we're going to do is we're going to just create a single parabola that goes with the flow of the hair that we have. We're going to right click on it, select stroke path, make sure it's set to brush, make sure it's set to simulate pressure, and we're going to press OK. And there we go. Let me just press enter to close or to clear this parabola real quick. And you'll see that we got the first stroke of our hair done. So that's what I want to happen. And you'll notice that if I create another parabola that is just going along the bottom edge of the parabola I just made and then stroke path, do the same exact thing and clear it by pressing enter. As I start to do this for a while, press enter, click, drag, right click, stroke, OK, press enter, you'll see that a little bit of a hair texture starts to form. Now, fortunately, in the actions tutorial, I created an action. Let me bring it up right here. I created an action called stroke path, which I have set to the F8 key. So every time I press F8, it's going to stroke the path and clear the path for me, saving me precious seconds with every strand of hair that I do. So instead of having to go through all those menus like I was before, I can just click click and drag and press F8 and then I can really start rocketing through this. Now let's say that it's coming out not as intense as I want it to be. Let's say it's kind of muddying together like that and I want to increase the, uh, the opacity or the brightness of the brush that I'm working with. I can always just select the brush tool and if I adjust it right there and then go back to my pen tool right here. And if I do the same exact thing of click, click, drag, and run the action, the F8 action, now I'm going to get some brighter strands of hair like this, which I want. And now what I'd recommend doing is for those of you who are watching this tutorial on a playback to realize that you have just learned all that you need to learn about doing hair and now the second thing that you have to do about doing hair is doing hair. So this is the part that takes a little bit of time. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to turn up the music and we are just going to blast on through this. So, I'll be sure to put a footnote in the uh, tutorial description of where to skip to for the next step in this. So, for those of you who have that information readily available, I will see you guys on the other side.
actually do have a mic today. I'm just uh, going a little bit easy on it right now because I want to get through uh, this part real quick. So I'm not going to be that talkative while I'm doing this. The, uh, playback posted uh, sometime this afternoon where I have an explanation of uh, how the hair is done. But basically, what I'm doing is I'm just using the pen tool with it set to paths and uh, just going through it one strand at a time. So, actually, there is a tutorial already posted under the uh, actions tutorial at the very tail end of it, so like the last third of it, is a tutorial for both creating the action and for how to just uh, create the strands of hair with the pen tool. Yep, it is Black Cat.
All right. <laughs> Let's just make a little note here. 24 minutes. All right. Yeah, I got through that one quickly. All right. Alright, so here we are at the 26 minute mark, and the basic texture of the hair is done. Now the texture is the most important part because it already looks like hair as is, so the rest of it isn't going to need to be as intense because the texture that's in place is going to convey the motion and the flow and the volume of the hair. And the rest of it can just be like the shading and the highlighting can be done really simply and easily. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold down alt and this layer here that's called hair copy I'm just gonna hold down alt gonna drag it up like that and then while still holding down alt I am going to link it to the lower layer so that way we've got a backup of it so if I do some shading on this and it looks absolutely terrible I have a backup of it I'm gonna select my shadow color and I'm gonna set the brush to be a large brush that should be fine I'm gonna set it to multiply and for its opacity I'm gonna just turn it down for its flow I'm gonna turn it down so I got an opacity of 30% and a flow of 30% and I'm just going to start painting in the shadow like so just really subtly uh, where the hair kinda curves in is where the shadow would be the most intense. It's kind of out and around the edges, like so, on the underside there. And I'm going to turn up the opacity of it. Smaller brush, turn up the flow. kind of really helps separate it out like that. Now what's nice about the rim lights, especially here on the face that we did in the skin tones tutorial, is that it helps to uh, separate out the skin tones from the hair behind it. So it ensures that there's a good amount of depth to the scene. Just keep on going here, smaller brush. It's going to really define those spots where the hair overlaps everything else. I'm defining overlapping elements, like so. even make adjustments to it right now. So let's say I want it to be a little bit lighter. I'm going to press Control M to bring up the curves menu. I'm just going to turn it up just a little bit like that. And I don't want it to be as saturated because so there's kind of too much blue and purple going on in there. And since it's going to be white, I'm just going to lower the saturation of it just a fair bit. And now I'm going to want to do the highlights in the hair. 
And for that, I'm going to hold down, I'm going to select my brush. I'm going to set the brush to be something really small. So, not even five, it's going to be three in this one. I'm going to set its mode to linear dodge. So I have a size three brush hard edge set to linear dodge. I'm going to turn up its flow all the way. And I'm going to turn up its opacity all the way as well. And I'm just going to make a couple of test strokes right here to see how it looks. Before I do that, and that's not even bright enough. So I'm going to hold down Alt, and I'm going to select that color right there. So kind of a brighter gray right there. Even then, still not light enough. So I'm going to go even lighter. That's more like it. That's what I want. So in the same way that I did the strands of hair, I'm also going to do the highlights. And I'm not going to do it with the brush tool. I'm going to do it with the pen tool. And the way I do the highlights is, think of it this way, if it's curving outward, so if the curve is pointing towards the light source, we are going to create a highlight that appears to be in the shape of the letter M. So just think about that, the, like a curved letter M. Like that, so we have, you know, one leg, the M, and then it comes down, and then it comes back up, and it curves back down like that. So let's do it again. Go, this will actually be higher, so about right there. So there's one leg, the M. Here is the other leg of the letter M. And then I just, with some downward motions like this, just do the middle part where it goes down, and then comes back up. And there we go. Whereas other parts, where it, the curvature of the hair is actually curving away from the light source. Similar thing, where we have the two legs of the M, but instead of doing the letter M, we're going to do a W. So we start down low and we work our way up, like so. Now this is all just stylistic. It's not necessarily realistic. It's just the way that I do it. Uh, you're welcome to explore and find your own way to do it as well. So since this one is curving towards the light source, it's going to be an M. Just like that. Now the way uh, highlights work on hair is it's kind of like a halo that bands around it because the hair is actually very reflective. It, uh, it reflects a lot of light that bounces off of it. So there's going to be a lot of contrast in it, and where the highlights do hit it, it's going to be really bright. And it's a good way just to make some really nice, lively hair. So it's just going to go in a curve, kind of like this. And then there's going to be a second curve where it starts to uh, flow outwards. This is when it flows down, and then when it flows outward, it's going to get another series where it picks up a lot of highlights. So you'll see how it's kind of bending around like this. Like she's wearing a headband or something. And then where it starts to curve outward, so away from her, around in this area, it's going to pick up the light source again. But since it's curving away from the light source, it's going to be in a W shape, kind of like that. I'm going to do this again right here, just to really cat make sure it catches those, uh, those highlights. And then here, uh, this angle would be facing towards the light source, and since it is angled in a way where it's pointing towards the light source instead of away from it, we're going to be going with M's, so it's going to go down like that, and then back up, like 
so. Same thing right here. And just one more right there. Another one right here where it would be pointing towards the light source. Since it's a little bit flatter, the highlights would be extended a little bit longer. Uh, right here, this one's going to be facing towards it. And then we got another area right here where we're going to get a band of highlights because it's uh, curving in a way that it would pick up the light source. So we're going to put an M-shaped highlight right there. Shaped highlight right here. Another M shaped highlight right here. Little M shape right here. Bit of an M shape right here. Uh, whoops, there we go. spots I might have missed. Just a couple more here, and then we'll be done.
Alright, so now that that's all set, this is pretty much passable for hair. Uh, there are a few other details that need to be done, uh, namely the rim light. So we're going to set it to the same pink color that we set for the, uh, the skin tones. And with it, the uh, brush mode set to linear dodge and still at three point. Well, let's just check to make sure we see how this looks, and that looks fine. We're going to uh, go to our pen tool once more. And just in the same way that we're making highlights around here, we're just going to do some long streaks along the edge of the hair like this to define the rim line like that. So it's like it's illuminating individual strands of hair. Alright, to emphasize the pink rim light, uh, since all we got are just kind of the edges right here, there is going to be a little bit of ambient lighting from the pink as well. So I'm going to go with a larger brush, like that. I'm going to set it to color dodge, and I'm going to reduce the opacity of it. And what this is going to do is it's going to give a little bit more pink around the edges there, just to kind of exaggerate it a little bit, like so. even go with it at a 10% opacity instead of the 30%. Let me just undo all that. That's too much. Yeah, that's more like it. And similarly, since there's going to be a yellow rim light behind her on the viewer's right side. I'm going to do the same thing, just creating a little bit of yellow right there. And then I'm going to hit it with a few uh, three-point linear dodge opacity at 70% brush strokes as determined with the pen tool. There we go.
and there we go. So we got all those rim lights in. I'm going to uh, reduce the curves just a little bit. And you'll see why. So not only does it give me some better contrast, but it also opens up the way for me to use a large brush set to color dodge. I'm going to take my original highlight color. I was going to... oop, too much. Add some more highlights right there using a large feathered brush. Just kind of really make it more of a silvery color. And I see people chatting in the uh, the chat window saying that black cat's hair is kind of more of a blonde than a silvery white and that's no problem at all. What I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna duplicate the layer by holding down alt and dragging it up click in between like that so now I have a backup of it and I'm just going to reduce the saturation of it real quickly and then I'm going to go into its color balance and I'm gonna give it just a little bit of yellow a little bit of red and a tad bit of magenta shadows make it a little more yellowish, more reddish. So something kind of like that. I'm going to increase the saturation on this so we get a bit more yellow out of it, like that. Note that I have it set as a backup of this, and let's say that I want, want it to be just a 50% blend between what I had and what I changed it to, because I kind of went a little bit overboard on that right there, and I did that on purpose to show that with this layer selected, all I have to do is just reduce its opacity, so now it's only halfway the blonde that I had before, so I'm just going to make it just a tad bit more blonde. I'm just going to eyeball it, so I don't have a definitive number in mind, but it seems that setting the opacity to around 25% is giving me an ideal-looking, blondish, silvery effect here. So maybe a little bit less. And now that it's all pretty much where I want it to be, I'm going to merge these two layers first. And then I'm going to create a duplicate again, I'm going to link it again, just have it as a backup, and I'm just going to do one last shading pass using my same color of purple I've always been using. I'm just going to once again define the edges a little bit more. So this is kind of just a, a post paint over to give it a little bit more, uh, a little bit more depth. Increasing the curves of the chest a little bit. That seems a little brighter. Like so, alright. And there we go. I would say that hair is done. For the most part. Let's just. Oh, there we go. So, yeah, by working in several different layers over things that have changes to previous layers, I'm able to reduce the amount of uh, changes I've done just by reducing the opacity of it. Now, since it's all good, let's uh, make sure we got the right layer here. So this is the layer with everything that's shaded in it. This is all the hair layers that we just did. Just going to select them all, merge them together, and there we are. We are back to a usual four, three to four layer composition. So yeah, very memory friendly, and that's pretty much how you do hair. It is a rather long, tedious, laborious process, but if you stick to it, you'll get effects kind of like this. And it's a process that you only have to do, or that you only have to figure out once, and it's a process that only takes a few seconds, but it's a few second process that you have to do hundreds of times. That's kind of what makes it difficult for people. So uh, hopefully this has been helpful for those of you who have given you ideas for how to work with the pen tool or with the actions. Uh, remember that I do have another tutorial on actions which has kind of a simpler version of how to do hair that doesn't go into this much detail. Uh, but I also recommend checking that out if you have any further questions about how to do uh, the hair or some of the procedures or the actions that I use. 
So anyway, thanks all for swinging by. And uh, if you have any questions, comments, or further input, you can find me on DeviantArt at vest.deviantart.com or you can email me at daviddelanti at gmail.com. So, hope this has been helpful, and I'll see you guys on the next tutorial.